while there were great men before him like John Muir and Aldo Leopold, Barry Commoner is credited with being the father of the modern ecological movement. He is credited with bringing the teaching of ecology down to the normal person's level so that they could understand the implications and the ramifications of their actions. He joined the faculty of Washington University in 1947 where he studied viral function and which led to cellular research against cancer. But in the 50s, alarmed with the uh, results of atomic testing, he founded the St. Louis Committee for Nuclear Information. 1966, he started. He established the Center for Biology of Natural Systems to study man's relationship with the environment. He's the author of nine books, and in 1980, he ran for president in the Citizens Party. He's a pioneer in the creation of the environmental movement and is termed the Paul Revere of e Ecology. In 1970, Barry Commoner wrote a book, The Closing Circle, which applied to all ecosystems in the populations and communities. The United States at this time was in a very bad way environmentally, declined since the Industrial Revolution. Many of the rivers and lakes were polluted. Uh, land was uh, contaminated. Uh, he, when he wrote the book, the average American was able to understand, and America began to pass laws to clean up the environment. Um, he came up with these three laws of ecology so that the average person could understand and fix the environmental problems that they faced. Barry Commoner's first law of ecology is everything is connected to everything else. This means that no matter what happens in, a, in an ecosystem, in a community, um, the slight change of one will affect all other aspects of that community. If um, a certain population of prey animals like uh, mice numbers drop, and there's, a, there's a very likelihood that they uh, other prey like chipmunks, things like that, would uh, be preyed upon more because the predators need to eat something. And all the things that those things eat, it's all connected one way or the other. And everything, uh, you can't change anything in an environment without basically having an impact on everything else. This can be seen dramatically when a, an exotic species is introduced into an ecosystem, a fairly balanced, stable ecosystem. Add one plant or animal that's not normal to that ecosystem and you likely will throw the whole thing out of whack. The 
second law is everything must go somewhere. There is no away. The law of conservation of matter states that all the matter that has ever been on the planet is here today and always will be. It's a, it's a closed system. Earth is a closed system. We're not getting inf significant matter from space, and we're not sending sin significant matter out into space. It cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. So when you put your garbage on the curb, when you flush something down the garbage disposal, it doesn't go away. It goes somewhere. And in a normal balanced system, it would be recycled, broken down into nutrients, to go back to the soil, to raise plants, to recreate that matter or other matter. But in our modern society where garbage men come and pick up our stuff, everything, we flush a toilet and it goes away, we don't have to worry about it because it goes away. Well, very important concept is there is no such thing as away. third law is nature knows best. The kinds of uh, plants and things that grow in a certain area are there because nature has figured that out over thousands of years. Uh, case in point, northern Wisconsin, after the big cutoff of all the mature trees, uh, immigrants from Europe came up there, set up farms, tried to grow traditional Wisconsin crops, dairy farming, corn, things like that, and slowly but surely almost every farm over 30 or 40 years failed because the soil was not conducive to grow those kinds of crops. What's the best thing to grow in northern Wisconsin? Trees. And finally we figured that back out, stopped fighting nature, and went back to basically planting over northern Wisconsin. And now a new crop, recyclable crop, uh, trees, is being grown uh, where it should be. A uh, farmer stops growing crops in a field, grows corn, wheat, or whatever. After a while, the natural vegetation will take over. It's, if it's dry enough, grasslands, otherwise, trees. We talk about primary and secondary succession in another presentation, how the plants slowly move from grasses to trees in an area. The, f the fourth law is there's no such thing as a free lunch. This is based on the law, first law of energy, thermodynamics. Energy in, energy out. You can't get something for nothing in energy terms. This is what our, our food uh, and energy pyramids are based upon. When energies change one form to another, some of it will be left behind as useless energy. Energy that's not going to be useful for use anymore. Basically heat. You, not, fine, you can't even break even in terms of energy quality. If I'm a coyote eating a rabbit, uh, only a certain percentage of the energy that rabbit ever got from the grasses that ate is going to go into my system. And likewise, most of my, the energy I take in will be slowly lost as waste heat because I'm a warm-blooded mammal and I live. I need ATP to run all my life's processes and that takes energy and when that energy is used up, it escapes out of my body as heat and slowly drifts up into space. Again, fortunately for us here on Earth, energy in from the sun, energy out as waste heat into space. This is also why certain um, predator animals only eat certain kinds of things. If a lion, say, would be chasing mice all day long, a big, big lion, it would waste so much energy chasing the mice that it wouldn't get enough energy just eating a single mouse for the energy expended to catch it. So I predators have to be so careful about what they chase because if they chase down something and it gets away they've wasted a lot of their energy and got nothing out of it so when they miss four out of five times that has to be factored into the size of the prey that they chase so when they are successful they are able to get enough energy to keep going to stay alive if you take in less than you burn off you'll slowly die 